Good morning, everybody. <coughs> My name, for the ones who do not me, know me, uh, I'm Giovanni De Siervo, and I'm working at the Italian Civil Protection Department. Uh, it's a pleasure for, for, uh, for me, for us, to welcome you here in our uh, headquarters for the final event of the Roadmap Project. Uh, today we will have the possibility to go into the content of the, what we have done in the last 18 months uh, on this project and also to try to look, to the future, to look forward to the future, discussing ideas and uh, po possible uh, future development of uh, not only the roadmap initiative but also more in general the knowledge network of the uh, union civil protection mechanism. So uh, it's a pleasure for me to pass the floor for our welcoming remarks to the head of the department, Fabrizio Curcio. Thank you, Giovanni. Thank you, dear colleagues, ladies, gentlemen. Thank you so much. For me, it's a, a great pleasure to be here today. I'm glad uh, to, to see and to have here our friends from the European Commission. So thank you so much to Felix Bloch, Artu Maratovic, thank you Artu, and thanks to Alessandra Zampieri and Marcia Santini for JRC. Uh, it's very good, uh, very good to see you, Marcia, here again. Uh, we have also the representatives of uh, three national civil protections, so Sweden, Portugal, Croatia. I don't know, but I know you are here and uh, from the other projects from the same call of love. But so really, thank you, it's very warmly welcome to you all. And thanks also to the other representatives of the project membership, uh, the University of Stavanger, Norway. I don't know if it's here. Yes. yes. And uh, the Association of the Development of Industrial Aerodynamics Portugal, thank you and uh, our friend of uh, CI3R, that is Andrea Prota, Professor Andrea Prota, uh, as you know, Italian Center for Research and Risk Reduction. It's a consortium of competence centers that uh, has been established under the auspices of the department. And uh, the purpose of uh, the aim, the purpose of the, this uh, consortium is uh, to create uh, a network of uh, multidisciplinary competence uh, to carry out the prevention and prepare the activities of, uh, for civil protection. So we are in the main goal of the, of the project. And uh, we want to work on this, uh, uh, on disaster risk reduction with uh, a view, a systemic approach that is uh, connected with the multi-risk and multi-sectoral approach. So I think we are really in the, in the field of more roadmap. As you know, Roadmap uh, is uh, a project that has been very strongly supported by the department. And uh, it's focused uh, on one of the aspects that is uh, for us very important in civil protection activities, uh, the connection between uh, the scientific information and uh, the civil protection activities that uh, in my world, in my country, is uh, strictly connected with uh, something that is called responsibilities. That's why for us it's very important. And uh, as you know, our system, the Italian system, is uh, based on this relationship since the very beginning. We was born with this relationship. Giuseppe Zambarletti, the president, uh, had in his mind, and it's something that's also in our mind, the connection scientific world, operative decision, and something that's connected with the awareness of risks. So in our country, it's very consolidated, this, this relationship. And uh, in these years, we are celebrating uh, 40 years, not me, <laughs> of the department of the civil, uh, Italian civil uh, department was born in 1982, 40 years ago, 
and we are celebrating the 30 years happy birthday for all of us of the first law of civil protection. It was 1992. And in these years, we had a lot of uh, movement in this relationship. As in some periods, uh, we, it was been easier. Ciao, Mauro. Uh, in other periods, it was very hard. And uh, I just would like to, to remind what happened uh, in 2009 in the relationship between science, decision making, communication to people, awareness, and the earthquake uh, of L'Aquila. That for us was a very turning point of this relationship. However, we think that uh, it's not possible to have a strong civil protection system without a very strong connection with the scientific communities. It's not possible. And if we just think what happened in the last two years with something that is quite different from civil protection, but it's connected with that, just what happened with the COVID-19 events, the scientific thinking, the operative decision, and the awareness of people. Is the same change, chain of command and control, the same. That's why we think that it's very important, this relationship, and uh, we obviously are looking with very interest what Europe is carrying on with the, the knowledge network. As you know, we support this project. We support very strongly this European project. But uh, as uh, I, I said also in the last DG meeting in Aix-en-Provence, we want to be clear on that, very clear. Because uh, this uh, uh, chain intervene in the chain of command and control of the member states. And uh, what do we think of this relationship between the scientific communities and the decision making, also the European level must be put inside the chain of command and control of the, each member state. We cannot have different scientific input because we were not able to, to know what to do. And we have the responsibility to do. That's why we think that the scientific product at the European level must deal with the scientific product at the national level. It's not possible to have a, a European level product that uh, arrive in the table of the decision making of the civil protection member state without a strict connection with the scientific world at the member state level. And that's why we think the roadmap is very important as project, because help us to be stronger in this connection and to have uh, a real networking of experts and a real networking of experiences that must work to, to together. And we daily take decision, daily take decision on a scientific basis. So it's very welcoming the opening word of the scientific uh, uh, support in this clear chain of command and control. So I think uh, that uh, roadmap um, represent uh, an important brick to build this uh, new roadmap of roadmap <laughs> at the European level, because we think that we must go in this direction. Uh, I hope that uh, who is thinking of the, the knowledge network at the European level has very clear this issue, because for us it's very, very clear. And uh, I am very confident 
that this will be a task that all together in Europe we can, we can, we can arrive in this goal. At the end, I would like just to underline that uh, we very welcome the, uh, the good practice that uh, we do, each of us does, which of us do, <laughs> do at the European level. In our Italian law, uh, we call it code. It's uh, required by the law, a good practice uh, observatory. We are working on that, so we are very glad to share uh, the way to put together the good practice. So it's very important. And uh, really, thank you. I, I, I can stay with you for just the very beginning. I'm sorry, but uh, we have all the other colleagues that uh, I really thank, all the colleagues of the, of the department that are working on this project very hardly. And uh, I wish you a very good work, a very good staying here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Curcio. Uh, now I, will, I would like to pass the floor to the president of uh, CIT3R, uh, uh, Professor Andrea Prota. Uh, the consortium CIT3R was the coordinator of the roadmap project. Thank you, Giovanni. Um, I would like to thank the, the head of the department, Fabrizio Curcio, and uh, the department that hosts this uh, meeting today. Um, it's really a great pleasure to come back to physical interaction. Uh, we all yesterday night enjoyed uh, something that uh, was really missing because at least for me, uh, I was in a dinner like that after probably two years and a half and uh, we, we discovered again how it's important also face-by-face -face, uh, interaction. Uh, so this, uh, this happens when the project is going to close because we know that the roadmap project will end uh, on June 30. But um, for us, uh, uh, this is a, a, an important day to share the, the main outcomes of this project. Um, we have uh, today here physically present uh, colleagues from 12 countries. Uh, I would like to mention them because it's a nice... We have a representative from Azerbaijan, Austria, Belgium, Croatia, Germany, Italy, Norway, Portugal, Romania, uh, Serbia, uh, Sweden, and the United States. Um, I would like also to acknowledge and thank um, the colleagues from advisory group, uh, which are Chris Barton, Lucia Herrero, and uh, Gerard Wotava, and the other many colleagues uh, that we invited from um, uh, other civil protections or as representative of experience of other projects. Um, we, um, and I'm very delighted that today we are here because uh, we, we think that uh, the, the way uh, President Zambelletti imagined, I think, the interaction between the scientific uh, uh, component and the, the, the civil protection is really um, this one, where we speak speak together, we interact, we share experience, and, and finally we contribute to something that is better for our citizens. Um, we come out from a, an experience where we, um, uh, we submitted proposals for the plan for recovery and resilience, and what the two main words are in my mind in, in that call, a multidisciplinary approach and a holistic approach. In order to do this, we know, and the roadmap is an example, that uh, it's important to um, put on the table com competencies which are not only from uh, scientific uh, uh, and te technological uh, part, but also we need uh, experts from social science, economical science. Um, and uh, uh, I was uh, mentioned yesterday night uh, that, for example, the, the recovery and resilience in Italy uh, for the topic on risk, risks in general was strongly linked to climate change and climate adaptation. So we need to uh, arrange in the best way uh, preparedness and prevention, uh, looking also to this main uh, objective. So managing, reducing risks in view of climate change and climate adaptation. This is a big challenge. We think that roadmap allowed us to um, 
um, really share best practice on disaster risk and crisis management. Of course, this is uh, to us is a, the, the, um, an intermediate step because we hope that roadmap can go ahead uh, uh, with uh, further experience. And today we will present the main uh, results. Uh, after an overview from Maria Polese, we will have uh, uh, the colleagues I would like to thank specifically uh, Felix Bloch, um, which is the head of unit of knowledge network and evidence-based uh, policy, and uh, also Alessandra Zampieri from JRC, and all the colleagues from these structures. We will have a, a, sh a slight change in the agenda. Um, so um, we will uh, skip uh, the introduction uh, to advisory group and conversation with the advisory group, which is, will be placed at the end of the morning. So after the question and answer and coffee break, we will have uh, uh, the presentation of the bulletins, the presentation of the thematic papers, and the presentation of the vision paper. And then we will close the morning with the, the part on the advisory group, which will be managed by colleague Domingos Viegas. This was done in order to uh, allow the discussion on the vision paper in the, in the first part of the day, where maybe uh, for us it will be better. Uh, I, I think that uh, this was a nice experience. I would like to uh, thank the partners of the consortium, uh, so the Italian Civil Protection Department, also the ADAI and um, the uh, uh, University of Savanger. And um, uh, I, I would like to um, remark that, uh, in my view, um, from an Italian perspective, the idea of CI3R was stimulated by the uh, civil depart uh, Italian uh, Civil Protection Department is a winning idea. It's demonstrating to be very important for us because uh, it is allowing to work together across different uh, um, uh, specialists in risks, uh, different risks, and uh, so to have a, a, a coordination at international level uh, in order to act in, uh, in support and in synergy with our uh, national uh, uh, civil protection department and then interact with the uh, other partners so in Europe uh, under the umbrella of uh, DG ECO and JRC. So I wish you all a nice uh, meeting and uh, uh, I thank you and give the word back to Giovanni. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea. Um, before passing the floor to uh, Maria Polese, I would like just to say one, one, uh, uh, one thing that it co comes from uh, my background. Because uh, I'm surrounded here by a lot of scientific specialist and uh, I, I'm, I was really glad to, to, lear, uh, to learn a lot in the last 18 months. But now I take something from my own background, which is law, and uh, I think that uh, uh, something that I c really passioned me on this project is the idea to improve the foundation, the, do the doctrinal foundation of the Union Civil Protection Mechanism. The Union Civil Protection Mechanism has been developing in the last 20 years uh, based on the good practices and experience of the people of the countries. And this is, was done, a, 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 it was it, it achieved incredible results, if I may say. But what is time, I, we believe that now it's time uh, also to clarify what are the theoretical basis of this mechanism. And this, I think, is one of the real ambitious goal of this project that I think uh, it was really needed. Because I remember 10 years ago we, when we had, a, uh, we organized a conference, an international conference uh, for the 10th uh, years of the Union Civil Protection Mechanism at the Castro Pretorio Library. And at that time, we were discussing that. We were missing this theoretical basis. We have, done, we have a lot of scientific knowledge uh, on the different hazards, but at the Union Civil Protection Mechanism, probably we uh, were lacking something connecting all of that. And this, I think, is one of the main goals that has been, we are trying to, to, to address. On the, we tried also to address in this project, and that's a very huge challenge for the Union Civil Protection Mechanism to make sure 
uh, that uh, through the knowledge network to have this sound uh, theoretical basis. Now, I, I leave the floor to the people that are, have been gone through this project all uh, the last 18 months, and it's my pleasure to uh, pass the floor to Maria Polis. Can you hear me? So, once again, uh, welcome. And I will give you an overview of the project. Um, and um, as already was introduced by, um, by Professor Prota and by uh, before, um, the consortium of Roadmap is formed by um, different partners. It's led by CI3R, uh, so the Italian Center for Research on Risk Reduction, as uh, you, uh, you have heard before, it is a consortium of different competence centers of the Italian Civil Protection Department and dealing with different risks. And in particular, within Roadmap, uh, just three of these competence centers participated. In particular, uh, CIMA Research Foundation was involved, and EO Center, and Re Luis. So CIMA deals uh, with different kinds of risks, mainly floods and forest fire risk while El Centro and Reluis are uh, both dealing with seismic risk. And uh, we, um, I mean, as competent center are uh, used to uh, cooperate with the civil protection. And, and so we, there is a link already active from many years. Then of course, the Italian Civil Protection Department and then the University of Stavanger and um, ADAI, the Associ Association for uh, the Development of industrial aerodynamics in Portugal. Um, so as you see here, the, um, the competencies and um, involvement of a, of a consortium of academia, research centers, and of course civil protection. And uh, the consortium guarantees an expertise in different risk and the, co uh, the cooperation, the networking in a wide uh, area of uh, aspect of disaster risk management. Um, but first of all, even before talking about the, the objective of the project, as also Giovanni has mentioned before, why roadmap? When we were preparing the proposal, we, we discussed what are the needs that we want to deal with. And uh, it was, I remember very well the discussion with Giovanni and uh, Daniela and Mauro, even before preparing the proposal. What are the needs that are really felt in this direction? Uh, we have to, to see that um, um, different kind of actors are involved in disaster risk management. And so first of all, we have different kind of decision makers that may be political decision maker, policy makers, 
and also technical decision makers, practitioners that have, may have different uh, needs and in their normal life, in the daily life. Prego. Just one second. We So technical decision maker practitioners, but also, um, of course, scientists, academics in general, researchers that deal with this problem and have to interface. Of course, the scope of the research has, has to be oriented in the correct direction. Otherwise, it, it can be useless. And it was mentioned before, the ju judiciary system ha can have an influence, of course, and uh, the decision might be impaired, being afraid or, or not knowing exactly which are the implications of certain decisions. And uh, of course, other key players are mass media, citizens, so we have a, an, a lot of interaction that need to be considered. So often complex decisions has to be taken uh, dealing with lack of time, lack of knowledge, lack of information, and also the shared experience are lacking. So there is a need of this kind of interaction. So learning from past positive experience for sure can uh, uh, be of help in facilitating the um, daily work of decision making in disaster risk management. Um, but the problem is the issue that there is a lack of shared understanding. So we know the knowledge is there, but has to be shared in a way that is comprehensive and it is understood by the most. And so the communication line, the, the interaction, and what do we need to communicate one of each other depend on who is communicating with who. So the kind of actors and what are the kind of com not only communication, the kind of issue that needs to be discussed. I try to pose some questions that can be interesting to discuss. So, uh, for example, different decision maker may want to need to know what was decided in the past in the similar situations, or what do the law say about certain issues, and what experience from a practitioner can give uh, insight and uh, can give um, um, good uh, information for deciding what to, what to do and what to plan, how to best communicate, and how to inform of scientific findings, findings the policy makers, and vice versa. What are the needs and expectations from, uh, from, from the decision makers that the, uh, that the, uh, the academics, the scientific researchers need to look for? and uh, which rules to enforce for the practitioners, how to train the population or how to inform the population, which technical solution can be of help for the, for the um, practitioners. And also there is the influence of the mass media and the general opinion on the public on the, on the policy and uh, on the decision making at higher level. So of course there is a need to improve the understanding, to systematize the knowledge and sharing of good practices. So basically, these are the needs that are informed. And um, so the lesson learned resulting from concrete experiences has to be shared in a way and has to reach the one that we want to know, <laughs> that we know, we know that are important to know the such uh, good practices. So the objectives of the project are shaped on these uh, needs. And first of all, as it was mentioned before, First of all, um, we want to put the baseline for the creation of a shared European doctrine on disaster risk and crisis management and funded on the mutual cooperation of scientific communities and disaster risk management authorities. So also the definition of such doctrine was not very, <laughs> of course, not trivial, but we can intend as a shared understanding of disaster management between decision makers and scientific actors. But then Daniela will talk more about this doctrine. And of course also this can be only achieved by improving the networking activity between uh, uh, of the community of stakeholders of, of disaster risk and formed by expert and science decision makers uh, in disaster risk management. 
So the key aspects that uh, the strategy that was um, um, put, uh, that was built for, for roadmap is founded of basically on two key aspects. Um, so we know the knowledge is there, the, well, more than the knowledge, the experiences, the, the, um, the practices are there, but they need to be collected in a way. So we, um, we call it bottom-up approach, even though you will see later, we will discuss it, it is actually bidirectional approach. So it is bottom-up for collecting and organizing such experiences, but then there will be also a top-down approach to uh, guide the organization of these experiences. So uh, for this, the knowledge has to be gathered, organized, and the approach was to organize uh, step by step. So first of all, by um, collecting them in periodical bulletins, and then uh, with the aid of selected experts um, that contributing uh, in working on certain topics, we prepared the three thematic paper, three thematic papers, so um, elaborating such knowledge on certain selected topics, and then finally the vision paper. You will we will hear about that. But this process has to be guided in a way. So the other uh, important uh, factor that guided us was the important role of the of advisory group and uh, that it's formed by both experts of decision making and also for, from research academics. And of, um, together with a broader um, um, group uh, of decision, uh, I mean the, the community formed together with a, a broader group of um, disaster um, risk management community involving the expert, the consortium members, and, uh, and so uh, by this networking activity. The methodology of roadmap was built based on these two main concepts. So we see here the methodology of roadmap explained. We see here in the left part this uh, uh, bottom-up approach. So from knowledge to policy, we indicated this. So we try to distill the knowledge with this approach that try to organize and uh, render the knowledge more understandable and more uh, um, usable to, to the stakeholders. And of course, as I said, the process um, is uh, very much interlinked with the interaction of this uh, uh, network, uh, this community formed by consortium partners with, uh, together with the advisory group. With the advisory group, we had periodical meetings and we talk about later about that in order to discuss relevant issues, how to steer the, the, our activities and what to look for and how to organize which were the issues that needed to be dealt with more deeply. And also, of course, this interaction was guided by meetings, but also the dissemination of what, and uh, the further discussion with the, uh, within webinars. And uh, uh, so there, there was a, a part of dissemination and also um, choosing also the topics of the webinars was key in order to, to guide also the preparation of the thematic papers. So everything was interlinked. Uh, and. Um, and then, finally, the solutions explorer. So what these good practices that we were looking for uh, are collected and shared through this uh, solutions explorer, which uh, is also organized and structured, we will see, in a way, in order to let these good practice, practices be, uh, being more easily findable. So now I resume um, quite briefly and the approach, but then of course we will talk about all of, about these uh, products later on with different presentations. So the periodical bulletins provide up-to-date information on good practices and solutions uh, uh, in disaster risk management uh, in Europe, but also in other countries. We can see here that it is a collection, we can see more um, proper, um, proper toward these uh, experiences, uh, examples. N we cannot uh, uh, for sure tag them as good practices because it is a, a question that needs to be discussed, of course. We are, we are still uh, in the process of, uh, of this. Actually, a, a more deepened discussion on good practice and uh, the topic was dealt with with specifically within the thematic papers. So an issue that was dealt with also how to define good practices in the, thema in the three thematic papers that were prepared. And um, 
And finally, the vision paper. Um, I mean, it gains from the experience uh, of the project and uh, elaborates and systematized also the results and the discussion and put the basis for the shared doctrine on uh, disaster risk and crisis management. About the networking um, activity and the community of stakeholders, as I mentioned, the advisory group is formed by selected experts of both science and decision making in disaster risk management. And uh, the approach to form such advisory group was to uh, consider uh, experts and from different risks and different phases of disaster risk management and possibly also with a gender balance and count, uh, I mean, uh, representatives of different countries. So this was the approach. And the periodical meetings were organized in order to discuss challenging issues. At the beginning, as we will we'll probably discuss, it was not easy to even to understand how to deal with these meetings, but then the process um, ameliorated. And I don't know if it can be seen the least, but uh, <laughs> I think all different representatives from scientists and decision makers. And then, as I mentioned, the disaster risk management community was enlarged. Um, and we can consider, for example, also the experts that were selected with specific calls to contribute to the thematic paper. Some of them are here today. I thank uh, uh, Boris Petreni, Valentina Rizzoli, and uh, uh, there is also Serena Tagliacozzi and others could not attend today. And um, then the webinars that uh, could reach a, a wider um, um, community. And the Solutions Explorer, when it will be open to the public, we, we hope, well, well uh, at least it is intended for a broader use. Um, these are the webinars. Um, i go briefly. This is the first one, the nexus between scientists and decision makers in disaster risk management. And then there are other, um, the two, the second webinar, communication challenges in disaster risk management and crisis management. And the third webinar, challenges and opportunities for the future of research and practices in disaster risk management. So um, going back a little bit, the first webinar, it was specifically uh, on the first topic that we felt it was important to discuss. So, so the nexus between scientists and decision making in disaster risk management. So in this first webinars, we had attendees from the advisory group and someone from the project and both scientists and decision makers. Um, in the second webinar, experts in communication were invited to attend. And I see here also Ian probably is connected online. Thank you, Ian. Could not come in present, Ian Stewart, and Nicola Nusengo, and Lucia Castro Herrera, who is here also from the advisory group. And, um, and the third webinar, we thought it could be interesting to discuss with representatives from other projects from ECHO. So that was another uh, occasion to meet and to broaden the networking. Finally, the Solution Explorer. You will hear about the Solution Explorer later. And um, it is an web um, open web platform um, that can host the good practices uh, in disaster risk management. So it, it is... Um, designed in order to be able to search and browse the, the good practices depending on a suitable categorization. And uh, it could be interoperable with, uh, with the RMKC and of, of course uh, with, the, with, the, with the Knowledge Network platform. We will see how, how to proceed with that. And with this, I finish this brief overview of the project. And thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Maria. Um, I already, uh, as you could see, and uh, as you know, there were a lot of uh, there is a lot of work behind this project that was carried out in the last 18 months, and all this work could not have been possible without the support of DG Echo and the, the funding of uh, uh, foreseen for the Knowledge Network. So, it's my pleasure to uh, pass the floor to Mr. Felix Block the uh, head of the unit the, uh, in charge of Knowledge Network for the DG ECHO. Do you have a presentation now? Okay. Thank you so much, Giovanni. Good morning, 
dear colleagues, dear friends, um, allow me to say, first of all, uh, um, a big thanks to the head of department, Mr. Kuchu, for his opening remarks. Um, allow me to say, over the span of a professional career, I think you uh, you sympathize. We will sympathize with with that statement. We have heard many uh, introductory remarks, often filled with courtesy, but emptied with empty of substance. And uh, therefore, I want to thank you for your very meaningful remarks, uh, which I heard loud and clear. Uh, um, I want to stress um, that for me it is crucial that the uh, legacy of Zambarletti will also inform the UCPM at a broader, uh, in a broader sense. I think this is something that that Italy is, is bringing into the family of the Union Civil Protection Mechanism that we cannot value highly enough. So thank, thank you very much really for your, for your opening remarks, uh, which uh, I have taken good note of. Um, obviously, I also want to echo Andrea's words and thank you, uh, you for the excellent dinner yesterday. It is indeed uh, uh, a heartfelt uh, uh, obligation to, to express that gratitude after all those years of WebEx and, and, and um, uh, online meetings, which we were all uh, having to go through and will probably have to go through for a while, but, but these are really the, the, the moments uh, where we can come together uh, as a civil protection family, making friends, and this is, I truly believe, the only way, actually, we we will build uh, the knowledge network ultimately it's because we are we are the uh, you know we are the family of civil protection we're all human beings and we need to come together as human beings talk to each other listen to each other try to understand each other and only this this way we can ultimately build uh, not only the knowledge network and the union civil protection mechanism but of course europe as a whole uh, so thank you for the Italian Civil Protection Department for hosting us today and thank you for the Roadmap Project for its incredible work which has obviously been challenging and which will continue to be challenging and we will see later uh, and we have already seen in the presentation how, uh, how we all understand that this is by all means not an easy task. Uh, to accomplish. It is difficult uh, and, um, and, 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 and requires a lot of work and a lot of brains and thinking uh, of how to move that further. This applies to the roadmap project and this applies again also to the building up of the knowledge network which I think is not, looks easy but maybe is not, not uh, uh, that easy. So thank you for also inviting the Commission to come here. In general, I think the Commission is not present enough in those meetings, which are very important. We often uh, like to uh, uh, spend our budget. You know, we are all uh, Commission officials and like to make sure that our budget is spent every year. And then we, we spend the budget and we do pro finance projects. And, and then we don't interact enough with those projects. We're actually not at those projects. Conversations are being held without the Commission actually being present. And, uh, and I think it's very important that the Commission is part of it because otherwise we will not really be able to, to follow the debate and integrate uh, the debate into the policy making that we all too often uh, develop in Brussels in our bubble without uh, real interaction. So thank you for inviting us and I'm really happy to be here together with my, my colleague Arthur. So what is the, uh, the, the, the DG Echo perspective on the knowledge network? Well, what is the rationale of the knowledge network? 
Right, let me start by briefly uh, going back in, in time a little bit, back to 2019, uh, when uh, Commissioner Stylianidis was actually uh, uh, putting on the table a revision of the UCPM legislation enter and adding also the, the notion of rescue into, the, into our, our legislation. And he not only proposed to put develop RESC-EU, but also the Union Civil Protection Knowledge Network. And this commission proposal uh, was received, uh, uh, I think, uh, with enthusiasm in the European Parliament. It was received with mixed, let's be honest, with mixed emotions uh, in the Council. Um, but ultimately, I think there was an agreement found, and one of the uh, um, elements of that agreement, I think, was not controversial, and that was the general idea of creating a Union Civil Protection Knowledge Network. Um, because I think we all realize that, um, that we need to better exchange uh, knowledge, experience, good practices, lessons learned, in order to further reinforce the efficiency and effectiveness of not only our joint training activities, our exercises, um, we need to um, pro further the promotion of research and innovation in the area of civil protection and disaster management, but we really need to, to further that mutual exchange to make the union civil protection mechanism stronger. And there is a recognition, I think, widespread that there is, in fact, a very deep and wide reservoir of knowledge in Europe that is not currently tapped into, that is not being, being uh, um, connected and, and, and made, and therefore not available uh, to practitioners in Europe. And that is something I believe uh, we cannot afford um, as, as the European Union, um, that is, uh, in the area of civil protection, um, more in business as we have ever been. I don't need to uh, refer to climate change um, effects, um, the pandemic and the war and the various cascading effects and all of that, I'm talking to experts, so no need to say that, um, but we are all reassured that our field of business is striving. And, um, and so in order to, to reinforce uh, the Union Civil Protection Mechanism in this regard, I believe that the creation of the Union Civil Protection Knowledge Network was essential uh, in order to provide the UCPM and the whole community with the knowledge and expertise we need to effectively do the work. So that was the, the notion back in 2019, basically, to create the knowledge network, and it's, I think, still the logic today. Uh, that hasn't changed. Uh, in the meantime, after discussion with member states and participating states, we have developed a governance structure of the knowledge network, and some of you here in the room were part of that discussion. Uh, and that led then to the official launch of the knowledge network in December last year uh, by the current commissioner, Mr. Lenacic. So what will the knowledge network try to do? It will certainly strive to play three ambitious roles wants to be a knowledge broker, a partnership facilitator, and an innovation catalyst. Big words, but I think they, they um, describe it well. Now, these roles cannot be achieved without close collaboration with all relevant stakeholders, as, and I referred to that earlier, the knowledge is dispersed on many, many lev levels and is often not connected. So with this in mind, uh, as we went forward to create the Knowledge Network, we, we also decided to develop this specific funding opportunity of so-called Knowledge Network Partnerships back in 2020 uh, to also to test the appetite of the community and to see 
what the community considers as priority areas. Because it's not, I don't think we have a good role to play in the commission to always determine that, but we need to listen more sometimes. And, and, and therefore the idea was to put out that call, uh, a pilot program uh, to help us and help the community to understand the type, the size, the diversity of partnerships that the Knowledge Network could ultimately support. Excuse me for, for, for those who have heard that, that metaphor, you know, I like to use it uh, uh, from gardening. Um, uh, I once learned that if you're going to develop a new garden or a park from scratch, the best thing you can do in the first year is basically do nothing but observe and see what grows naturally to understand the environment of your your garden, and, and I think this was the same logic a little bit to uh, start with a pilot to see what is growing naturally, what are what what grows under the prevailing conditions, uh, and and therefore uh, the first round of of the knowledge network partnerships, and indeed the roadmap project was uh, among those plants that uh, growed, uh, that grew, you know, quickly, and you were the brave ones to apply in that first round for this call and put forward an ambitious proposal, the roadmap uh, project, which we now see in an early blossom of the garden, which, uh, uh, which I, I really like. And, and it's indeed a very relevant and a very interesting um, project. And it is based, and I look forward to learning more about this today, but my understanding is clearly that it is based on the premise that Mr. Curcio has referred to as well in his opening remarks of a very close cooperation of scientific communities and the civil protection authorities. I think this is essential, and it is a collaboration that transcends the borders, bringing together the relevant actors now from Italy in this case, mostly, but also from Portugal and Norway. And this is exactly the partnership that the Knowledge Network uh, wants to support. So on the one hand, the Roadmap Project is looking uh, back into the past, trying to collect, review, and analyze experiences to identify good practices, successful stories, and lessons learned, and then make them available and usable for the whole community. This is exactly what we're looking for, and this is therefore fitting perfectly into the mission of the Knowledge Network. Roadmap is looking to the past, but also into the future, aiming to establish the Europe, a European doctrine on disaster risk and crisis management, which we will hear about later today. I look very much forward to hearing more about this and reflect together on how we can bring the results of the projects on board of the Union Civil Protection Mechanism and the, the Knowledge Network in, uh, in particular. So what is the perspective of DG ECHO on the Knowledge Network? The perspective is, is I think, linked to the motto that we developed, connect, share, grow. Um, and if we are successful with that knowledge network, better connecting and sharing and growing our knowledge, I think the knowledge network can indeed be a game changer for how we do civil protection in the European Union. So thanks again for being part of that work. Um, it is your achievement, but uh, it's a collective achievement as always. I am confident that the roadmap project can be indeed an important building block as we move forward to build the knowledge network together. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Felix, uh, for your words. Uh, now we, we feel a sort of a bit the pressure for the future. Huh? <laughs> okay, uh, now, 
we thank, I thank for, uh, very much DG Echo for the support uh, received for this project. Now I would like to thank JRC for the support on the technical side and the collaboration we got during the entire project. And it's my pleasure to pass the word to uh, Ms. Alessandra Zampieri from the Joint Research Center of the European Commission. Mr. Curcio, Andrea Giovanni, colleagues all, thank you very much for having this science at this event today, the Joint Research Center of the European Commission. We were there at the start of this project. We were invited to be part of this project roadmap as Joint Research Center, but uh, we decided at that time that for us it was better to accompany the project and to come at the closing event to make sure that we can absorb the results of Roadmap into the Knowledge Center of the European Commission and into the Knowledge Network and the Science Pillar. And this is why we are here today. We are here to make sure that uh, the results of the Roadmap project are become have a second life, have a life after the project uh, through the Knowledge Center and through the Science Pillar. And I will tell you in a second how, but before doing that, maybe I introduce the Joint Research Center. I'm not sure that you all know us. We are a department of the European Commission carrying out applied research in various sectors with one only mission, which is to provide evidence, facts, tools, knowledge for policymakers. And the European Commission is proud to have an independent and open scientific body inside its services to help the other department, like eco, climate, environment, to do evidence-based policies. In this context, the, the, the work that we do in my unit, I am responsible for disaster risk management. This is a, a traditional unit we have been working for many years in, in this field. Uh, you may know, for example, for sure, I'm sure that if you're working in this field, you know the Copernicus products, that's the Copernicus services, the emergency management service, EFAS, EFIS, GIDO, uh, but also the international uh, part of this, these uh, services, eh? that we do it for the whole world, and more and more countries around the world are turning to us to help them establish services. For example, for fires, now we are working for, for Latin America and Central America and establishing this service for them too or you have certainly heard you must be one of those 60,000 people receiving our warnings, early warnings through the GDAX system. So this is, this is what we do. But we always do this with a EU perspective. We, we therefore, we don't uh, interfere, we don't want to interfere, or we don't want to substitute the national systems that are carried out and are done with models and data at a higher resolution and for the specific purposes of the national needs, to reply to the national needs. So we do this really EU level. We don't want to replace, we want to collaborate with the member states and their systems. And, and, um, and I believe that the science pillar will be the place, as you said, Mr. Curcio, to make sure that we integrate your command and control lines without interfering with them. And if this has happened, we have to make sure in that framework that this becomes an, an opportunity and not a problem, and that we work together as we have been doing for many years with Italian civil protection and other authorities in the field to make sure that this is really what we do because risks and hazards are becoming more frequent, more complex, and they will only be faced in a nice manner and in a constructive manner if we work all together. This is our mindset, this is how we work, and this is how we really want to continue to work in the framework of the science pillar and the knowledge center. Why do I mention the, 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 knowledge, the science pillar so often? Because in addition to being the science body of the European Commission, we have the honor to have been granted the responsibility by member states to be the nucleus and responsible for the science pillar of the knowledge network. So the, the, the knowledge center of the European Commission has been asked to become the nucleus and to facilitate 
the work of the science pillar of the knowledge network. And uh, we are starting to discuss, to present to the member states, to discuss with Felix and colleagues and with the other departments of the commission, what is this science pillar? What, how is it going to, what are the founding principles of this science pillar? Well, I want to mention three to you today. First of all, the science pillar, we have to work with uh, a, a, a reference community. It is very important that the scientists come together, discuss, share the, their knowledge in this framework of the science pillar. Second, what we need in the science pillar uh, is uh, constantly uh, renewing, innovate, and make sure that the tools that we develop are up to date, they are improved, and they are made available. So a community and also innovative approach and tools. The third is the ability of the scientific community to reply quickly to the request of policymakers or to the risk or to the challenges that we have to face. So this ability to react and to provide easily results, tools to policymakers, to practitioners, to the civil protections. And, and in this respect, I found a perfect match with the result and with the work of the Roadmap Project. Because we have a community here, so the first uh, principle of the, of the science pillar, you have satisfied. You have a community, we have 12 member sta mem states present today, huge community, larger than the members of the, of the, of the, of the project itself. Very good result, this is exactly what is needed. And second, for the inventories, for the tools, for the new, uh, uh, really, tools to be made available, let me congratulate you with the Solution Explorer. Just with this name, you should win the Nobel Prize for me, because <laughs> this is exactly what we need. We need a Solution Explorer, we need solutions for the problems, we need the ability to study the complexity of what's ahead, be ahead of the curve, and really providing the solutions. So with this, Already roadmaps uh, satisfy also the second criteria. And the third one, the third criteria that, we have, uh, that I have mentioned, which is this flexibility to reply, is in my opinion satisfied through the thematic reports that the project has produced, the webinars, and really made it available, immediately available, this knowledge and this competence. So as I said in the beginning, we were not partners of, this, partners of this project because we want to be here at the end of the project and make sure that all this is made available in the science pillar. And this is really what we intend to do together with EGECO to make sure that this project financed with public money. They don't stop and they don't end when the project stops, but they continue to operate. We want to count on this community also for the future. For example, to animate uh, groups that we intend to establish under the science pillar, and we certainly need work, uh, reflection, considerations uh, to strengthen the foresight capacity of, of the community, of the science pillar, and of the knowledge network in, in general terms. So it would be nice if we could count on you, because we have seen potential here. But there are also other parts of the project that we consider have a, a huge uh, potential, like uh, the vision paper is still in a draft format, but there are very interesting elements there that we are uh, considering and analyzing. But also the doctrine on disaster risk uh, and crisis management is certainly interesting and, and source of inspiration for our work for the future. And I personally liked a lot your considerations about the need to integrate qualitative qualitative research into the quantitative uh, analysis on which we are stronger in disaster risk management. We are less strong in integrating uh, qualitative uh, disciplines. And we are doing this for our work program, for my unit, for my uh, work in, at the Joint Research Center. But certainly this is needed uh, also to be replicated in the science pillar in general, because the complexity really is increasing. And, and we really need to integrate more disciplines and have a multidisciplinary approach to disaster risk management, prevention, re response, and, and, and recovery for sure. So this is a very interesting element too that we want to, to implement in future. 
Now, the next steps for us uh, is, um, well, we are working very hard to prepare the next annual seminar of the Disaster Risk Management Knowledge Center. This has become also the event which we use to establish the work program of the science pillar. This uh, event will take place in, in November. Uh, they will be widely advertised. You are already all invited to contribute there. It will be an important uh, step forward for the science pillar because we want to move from an approach which has been mainly commission focused in the, in the Joint Research Center, Knowledge Center. We have really been working more to help uh, our colleagues in, in Brussels, in the policy DGs in Brussels. Now we make we are ready to make the step forward and integrate more member states and the wider community, the scientific community. So you are all already members of the Science Pillar. Come and help us at the annual seminar this year with this uh, step in mind. Therefore, with this I, I conclude. I invite you to continue to collaborate with us in very many forms, very many forms. We constantly organize events. This uh, fantastic garden that uh, Felix uh, lives uh, there for one year is really also being uh, helped by us with all our events. We have uh, many that are already part of the science pillar. We have workshops next week, for example, on uh, the disaster risk uh, app. There is Data Hub, sorry, there is Data Hub, and another very interesting workshop on, on droughts. So check our website and register and follow uh, all our events that are there to build this community and this knowledge. I conclude wishing the Italian Civil Protection happy birthday. Very nice, very, very, very good. And if you organize parties, invite us, because at the end of the day, scientists are party people, aren't we? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alessandra. Uh, now we have uh, foreseen a short question and answer session. Uh, if there are burning questions that uh, you want to raise to our guests, uh, we would be happy to, to take them now before the uh, photo opportunity and the coffee break. So uh, are there questions or a request for clarification? Apparently everything was extremely clear. Or maybe uh, the, the question will come after the coffee, maybe. That's the also the <laughs> So uh, I, I think we are ahead of schedule and we can have already our photo opportunity outside. We will take a picture of the participants to the workshop and then we will uh, have our coffee break. So please follow us outside on the, in, the, in front of the building, we will have to get the picture.